Here's the uh, Jackery uh, overlaid on the uh, the Dokio panel. <laughs> you know, the Dokio has just got a lot more mass to it. It's not really good solar conditions. Uh, it's always challenging when the sun is uh, shielded by clouds. But uh, I'm going to compare a single Jackery 100 watt panel and a Dokio 300 watt panel charging a Jackery 500. This Jackery in these cloudy conditions is only putting out 16 watts. And I'm going to compare it to the Dokio 300 watt panel, which is not a fair comparison, but uh, I'm going to do it anyway. Jackery, uh, Dokio makes it very easy for you. They give you these adapter cables so you can just plug this right into your Jackery. There we go. And the Dokio is putting out 63 watts, so there's no comparison, and this is in heavy clouds. So uh, the Dokio uh, wins. The Dokio 300 watt solar panel, it's $300. It weighs 22 pounds. This is the first week I've had it out, and so far it's doing great. These are the connectors that come with the Dokio solar panel. It's a complete kit here, so I'm going to show you what each cable does individually. The first cable is this uh, 10 foot long cable. This plugs directly into the solar panel. So out of the solar panel is an SAE connector just like this, and this connector plugs into that, and it's a 10 foot long cable and move the panel around. And on the other end though, is this uh, new connector for me. It's called an XT60. That's XT60 connector. And uh, this is what plugs into the controller and other wires that the Dokio comes with. Now, if you're charging a Jackery, you plug this end into the uh, solar panel and you take this female, this male XT60 connector you plug that in here, and they give you several barrel connectors. And the one that fits the Jackery is this yellow one. You plug that on here, and you plug that into the Jackery. And no controller is in the loop then, because the Jackery has a built-in controller. You're just going from solar panel to Jackery. And you need these connectors to do it. Now, for, char for charging the trailer, I need to have the controller in line. The controller comes with a one-page manual. It's a PMW controller, and it comes with the kit. When you're going to connect to, the, uh, to, a, to a battery, uh, before you hook the solar panel to this controller, you must plug this into a load, which would be a battery. And uh, here's the symbols. You know, you plug this in here, and you hook this to your battery. When I, you know, you have to have a meter and test all these connections before you hook them up to anything. So you don't have a, a smoke and flame condition. So first thing you have to do is hook this up to the battery and this will energize. You'll see the panel come on. Uh, then you can take the other end of this cable. This is the one coming out of the solar panel and you can then connect it to the solar panel symbol here. You connect that up and now the battery, this would illuminate, you would see the solar panel symbol and it would have an arrow that points to the battery and that indicates it's charging. And I'll show you some of the display this has. The, um, this controller also has a two amp, two, one, two, two amp USB outlet. So you can hook a USB uh, device to this. Um, there's also this other connector for a string lights, which I guess Dokio sells. I, I don't have much of an interest in that, but I, I haven't tested what the output, you know, capacity of that is or anything, but uh, I could do that here. Uh, anyway, so I'll have to check out what that is. Once it's hooked up, you can press this button and it'll toggle through a number of displays. It will show you how many volts are coming out of the solar panel. It'll show you how many amps are going into the battery. 
They included everything for what I wanted to do. However, I probably said it before in this video, when I received my first Dokio panel, it did not include the connectors. And I said, well, I'll just buy the connectors. When I added it all up, it was gonna be like $60 and I couldn't get this particular one. <laughs> so uh, I said, forget that. I contacted Amazon and they shipped me another panel and that one came as a complete kit. I was very happy and I shipped back the other one all at no charge to me. So thank you, Amazon. And uh, this is a good, I'm getting better performance with this than the other solar panels that I had. Um, I have two freestanding solar panels and this 300 uh, Dokio. And I'll tell you, the Dokio is doing the job on cloudy days. I still have to test it under forest conditions and, and clouds. Dokio says you should um, hook up the battery side first so that's the connection that goes to the battery and you can see this clicked on I hope that's visible 13.2 volts is my battery on the trailer uh, you hook that up first then you hook up the uh, the solar panel side this XT60 connector comes from the solar panel and it is uh, connecting into the uh, the charge controller and then you have a button here uh, let's see if I can get this uh, in it's a little Okay, I press the button, and it says the trailer is taking 3.3 amps now. Now, why is that? The panel is supposed to put out uh, 100 watts, uh, 300 watts. Uh, should be putting uh, a lot more, right? Well, not so. The way the electricity works is the battery draws what it needs. This battery is mostly charged. It's almost noon, and uh, the battery was charged by about 11 a.m. totally. So it's only drawing what I consider somewhat of a trickle charge now at 3 amps. And uh, it's got the voltage now is up to 14.2 volts. The only way you're going to see full amperage that's coming out of the panel. Now it's down to 2.9 amps. The only way you're going to see the full capacity of the panel going into a battery is if the battery is completely dead or you have it on a dummy load. I see many people test a battery without a dummy load and uh, you're really testing how much the battery is absorbing. Yeah, the, you're not telling how much output the panel has because the panel may be capable of more. This controller can be used for uh, lead acid AGM and lithium batteries, and there's a different charging profiles you can set in the settings. I'm, I'm used to seeing um, silicone crystals like this. It's pretty much a solid affair. Sometimes they have wires going uh, across them, uh, and uh, this is typical for the solar panels that I've had. The Dokio is a different character, though. I don't know if it's coming across on here. There's all these little uh, squiggles of uh, wire uh, on every single panel so you have the same basic size panel but there's an awful lot more of these conductors embedded in them the panel has a pocket here an accessory pocket I haven't used that at all it's actually wet in there because it poured last night so the panel is a flexible panel you know you can only flex these so far before you'll do them damage so be careful now uh, it's a uh, pretty compact size it weighs about 20 pounds 22 pounds now, it just Velcros. There's Velcro up here. You just tear that Velcro open, open her up, and there you go. Uh, it's a little tough to, uh, to comment on the, uh, on the construction uh, at this stage. I mean, I just got it. It's a nylon fabric. Uh, not unlike the Jackery panel. I think the Jackery panel is a bit higher quality in uh, portability and you know, movability. Uh, they definitely had portability in mind when they made this. It comes with these D-rings on here. Let the panel comes with these, uh, these D-rings here. Now there's numerous reports on Amazon that these D-rings will rip out. Now my thought, my first thought is, I think if you hang it by one or two of these D-rings, yeah, I think it'll rip out. But perhaps if you had an adequate number of, say, nails in a wall or something, and you hung them all up at once and distributed the weight evenly, uh, maybe it wouldn't rip out then. But I can't comment on that because I haven't done it. The construction seems acceptable to me, and they claim it's waterproof. Got to keep the snow off the panels. This uh, panel and kit arrived literally as I was leaving for this trip. Uh, and what I did, uh, I didn't have time to do anything better, but I needed a waterproof housing for this uh, controller. So I just put it in a plastic bag. I'm using a silicone rubber band and a suction cup to hold it to the side of the trailer. And 
I just wanted to note what you want to have is you want to have a drip loop. Uh, if it rains out, I want to make sure that this is the highest point so the water does not run down the wire into the controller. I just want to have a, a high point uh, setup, which with a rubber band and a suction cup, that's what I've got right now. These panels are extremely flexible. You can't just kind of grab one in and lift it up. It'll just curve and it won't, uh, it won't, uh, you need to make a frame to hold it up if you want to do that, to hold it at an angle. Or, I'm not worried about that. They gather enough light for my needs when they're flat. If it's important to you to angle these towards the sun, you're going to have to figure some kind of a support out. I've been using this panel for six days now with the controller that came with it. And uh, that's it. I'm spoiled. I'm giving away these old panels that I had been using. I have two of them. I'm going to stick with the uh, Jackery panel. It's a handy panel to have. I have two of those. But I've ordered a second one of these panels. It's exactly what I wanted. It was cloudy this morning. The sun came out at about 10. And it's, uh, it's almost 1 o'clock now. This panel had that trailer charged by about 11 a.m. And it's, uh, it's been topped off all day. So it really is doing uh, just a sweet job. I hope the durability is good on this because uh, <laughs> it's the answer to what I need.